you ever noticed that once you've felt pain, you'll do whatever you can possibly do to avoid feeling that discomfort again? For example, you steer clear of things, animals, people, situations that you believe are similar to whatever caused you pain, your past pain, and could potentially do so again. But it's possible that this time you'll experience pleasure, but you're never gonna know because your past painful experience has trained you to avoid similar pain. Simply said, you've become pain averse. Now, I began thinking about pain aversion training when I took my 14 month old po puppy, Elu, for rattlesnake aversion training last weekend. She needs to learn to stay away from snakes, period, but especially rattlesnakes. And I live in New Mexico where there are lots of rattlesnakes. Last year, we saw at least four. Um, the dog next door got bitten by a rattlesnake. So it's a necessity to teach your dog to stay away from rattlesnakes. Um, it's a life-threatening incident if they get bitten. But it's not enjoyable, the process of teaching a dog that snakes need pa mean pain. Um, and of course, the snake's never going to, the dog, I'm sorry, is never going to realize that the rattlesnake bite can be life-threatening. They also don't associate the bite itself with the pain because the pain happens after the bite. And so they get bitten. Same with a human, you get bitten and it hurts, but it's not that bad until the venom really starts circulating through your body. Then there's a lot of pain. So rattlesnake aversion training for dogs involves exposure to a real rattlesnake and elect an electric shock shock. Can't seem to talk today, and an electric shock that simulates the pain of an actual bite or what would happen afterwards. The dogs are actually given a chance to go right up to the snake, which has been rendered harmless okay so they milk the the venom from the snake and they do something with their fangs and whatever and the snakes grow their fangs back and the venom comes back and all that stuff it's really not um any different than the snake you know biting someone a bunch of times anyway so the snake is rendered harmless and then the dog can go up to it and actually the snake can strike it um and when when the snake strikes the dog, at the same time, the trainer shocks the dog. The dog is wearing a shock collar. And that creates the association between snake or snake bite and pain. Now, not every dog actually gets bitten by the snake or, you know, gets close to being bitten. And actually, the, like I said, the fangs are gone. So the snake itself is doing no harm to the dog and the shock is unpleasant, but there's no real harm. So many dogs, like my dog, Elu, didn't even want to get close to this rattler. Um, they got shocked anyway and are put in close enough proximity to the snake that they remember the sound and the smell of the snake. Um, other dogs, including my neighbor's dog, who I told you got bitten last summer, go right up to the snake and stick their nose in its face. My neighbor's dog actually um, went right up to the snake three times before deciding it wasn't worth <laughs> Over, it was worth overcoming um, curiosity to avoid the pain of the electric shock. So then the snake is moved to another location and um, the dogs are asked to, you know, kind of parade by the snake. And most of the dogs avoid the snake. They've successfully been trained to be snake averse. The ones who don't, they have to go through the same training again. Now, I get to some people this. Snake aversion training seems cruel, but in my mind, Elu needs to be taught that snakes equal pain and experiencing pain will keep her away from them, we hope, and safe from harm. So why am I telling you all this? For us humans, life offers pain aversion training free of charge, <laughs> free of charge. And without us signing up for a class in advance, and as a result of life offering us pain aversion training, we stay away from things we think will cause us pain because we got bitten once or even twice by something similar. So for example, if you invested in the stock market and lost all your money as a result, you might become averse to investing money. 
but you might avoid all types of financial investments, not just the stock market. Or if your first marriage ended with your partner walking out and leaving you alone and heartbroken and with a stack of unpaid bills, you might become averse to getting married ever again. You might even decide to avoid romantic relationships in general. Now, these decisions are probably made unconsciously in most cases. In some cases, though, you might be totally conscious of your choice. You know, you might say, I'm never investing money in the market again, or I'll never get married again. Unfortunately, similar situations may never hurt us again, like the ones in the past, but we avoid them anyway. And unlike rattlesnakes, if we allowed ourselves to experience these things again, these things, people, whatever, situations, we might find that they don't hurt, but instead provide joy, success, prosperity, love, fulfillment, comfort, right? Things that are pleasurable. Now, you and I can probably agree that learning that it gets it hurts to get bitten by a snake and is life-threatening is a lesson worth remembering. It's good training never to get close to a rattlesnake again, right? On the other hand, learning that it can hurt when you lose money or a relationship fails is worth learning, but that lesson won't necessarily serve you in the long run. After all, investing money in a safe manner can actually yield great financial results. It can help you retire and, you know, all those things. And entering into a new relationship might actually bring a lot of pleasure or even a lifelong loving partner. So avoiding pain can mean avoiding pleasure inadvertently. And that's why it's best in most cases to untrain yourself from past pain aversion training. Now, this isn't true in all situations, like with a rattlesnake encounter and bite, but it's true in many situations. And as a result, we're missing out on all kinds of pleasure and fulfillment. So what would happen if you stopped avoiding the pain you believe you might experience simply because you experienced it in the past in a similar situation? Imagine that. You probably already realize this, but if you stop avoiding pain, you open yourself to the possibility of experiencing all sorts of pleasurable things. But remember, you have been trained to avoid pain. So now you have to retrain yourself to seek pleasure. And to do that, you need to tackle a few things. The first is to prove to yourself that just because a situation, personal person, animal, whatever, is similar to that which caused you pain in the past, it doesn't mean it's gonna cause you pain now, right? The second is to be courageous, to prove that you won't necessarily feel pain in a current situation similar to a past one that did cause you pain. You have to take bold action and you have to test it out. You might, you know, you have to try it out and just see what happens. Now, I will note here that you might have to do this more than once. You might have to take bold action more than once, especially if you don't experience pleasure immediately. Because keep in mind that you have programmed yourself, you've trained your mind to believe that you are going to experience pain in these situations or with these types of people or whatever. And those neural pathways are working, right? Besides which you're putting out into the universe the fact that you are going to get get hurt. You're going to feel pain. And so it might take a few efforts to change your neural pathways and to create something different, to attract a different experience than pain. Right? So just keep that in mind. The third thing you have to do is be open to having a new experience. And that means giving up your old stories about things always causing pain when in fact that isn't true. You might have only lost money on the stock market once or been left by your partner twice let's say and that doesn't mean your that that your story that it always happens that way and you will feel pain every time is true and the only way to find that out and train yourself retrain yourself and your mind to believe that it can turn out positively that you can experience pleasure instead of pain is to be willing to experience something different and to entertain the possibility of it being different. 
Now, another powerful way to stop avoiding pain is to change your identity. So right now, if you are avoiding pain, then you are someone who avoids pain. So instead, become someone who embraces the possibility of pleasure instead. Okay. So these are some really powerful ways to stop, you know, to, to retrain yourself out of being pain averse. Okay. Unlike my dog, Elu, who needs to be trained to be pain averse, you need to retrain yourself to be, be open to the possibility of pleasure and fulfillment and joy and success and all those things. Because you never know. And one experience of pain doesn't mean that every time that happens, you will have pain. Again, there are some situations where that is the case, okay? Like a rattlesnake bite. But in a lot of other cases, it's not true. So are you pain averse? And are you willing to give up your pain aversion in order to potentially experience so much more pleasure and success and fulfillment and joy? I hope so. Leave me a comment down below this video. And if you want to read something similar to what I just shared with you, go on over to my blog at ninaamir.com and you can read a related blog post. Actually, the link is right down below this video. But leave me a comment and tell me. And if I can help you in any way, I'd be thrilled and honored to support you as you retrain yourself for, um, you know, for pleasure over pain aversion. Okay. I'm Nina Amir, if you don't know that already. I am the known as the Inspiration to Creation Coach. I am a transformational coach and a certified high performance coach. And I like, I, I feel, feel it's my purpose and my passion to help people step into being the type of person who can create what they desire do the things that will help them create what they desire. And what I really want is for you to learn how to live a life that feeds your soul. That's my purpose here. My, my lesson is learning to live a life that feeds my soul. We're spiritual beings having a physical experience. And um, if we are as physical human beings, not doing the things that feed our soul, we're going to feel somewhat lost and unhappy and unfulfilled, right? And so that's why I offer both personal and spiritual growth in my Inspired Creator community. The link for that is up above. Um, I, I firmly believe that we need to, 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 I don't like saying work on, but we need to address both, you know, the entirety of who we are, the spiritual and the physical slash human part of who we are in order to reach our potential and really live our lives fully. So if that's of interest to you, click above on the link for the Inspired Creator Community. And I hope to see you in there. It would be my honor to serve as your transformational coach. And in the meantime, stop being pain averse, open to the possibility of pleasure, okay? Till I talk to you next time, go out there and achieve more inspired results. Mm -hmm.